Mode. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, European Crossover Webinar. Um, Going to start about two and a half minutes later. Um, didn't get much sleep last night because I was up so late with uh, the BOJ, which that was the latest I've seen them ever release a statement. I'm not seeing it probably ever, but that's the latest I've ever seen it. So it was uh, probably for good reason because it was. Quite the disappointment. Uh, the market was already jumping around even before then, and we even saw some trigger fingers with uh, a quick sell off in the Nikkei. Uh, but uh, as I said, it was really a, a disappointing uh, number. I mean, uh, you know, some people I know that they're trying to put together a twenty-eight trillion dollar uh, stimulus budget or whatever, and uh, some hope for twenty trillion. Uh, and the Reuters article said it wasn't going to be any more than uh, not uh, seven trillion, uh, and it ended up coming in half of that, three point three trillion. So uh, I thought it would come in a little bit more higher, you know. So they're trying to uh, meet somewhere halfway, um, you know, meet them halfway across the what the expectations were. Uh, I think it, I thought at that point it would have only been a balance. Uh, <clears throat> To fade, but that number was just absolutely abysmal. And um, yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I'm surprised to even see the market. Even, I'm talking about the uh, the dolly in, even holding up so well in this area. So um, we'll go and take a look at this story for anybody who missed the details. Um, go into that. I mean, it was a complete, absolute disappointment. Um, here we go. The yen soared against the dollar on Friday after a round of modest monetary policy easing for the Bank of Japan disappointed investors who had been hoping for a, at least a hint of more radical stimulus. In a month rife with speculation that the Japanese authority were ready to move towards helicopter money, drops of cash to businesses and consumers, the yen has been the more volatile at any time since the 2008 financial crisis. It surged almost 3%, peaked a trough in the 30 seconds following the Bank of Japan decision, and as Governor Hirohiko uh, Kuroda's news conference continued early in the European day, it was up almost 2% against both the euro and the dollar. That left it short of levels seen as investors flood into the traditional security of Japan after Britain's vote to leave the European Union last month but saw a number of banks benefit calling the yen higher. Kuroda ordered a review of the effectiveness of the policy for the next meeting, which that doesn't mean a dollar, don't think, which will keep easing expectations alive, will keep easing expectations alive, but in our view, not sufficiently to stop the trend of yen strength reasserting itself, said Adam Cole, head of GTFX strategy at RBC Capital Markets in London. The dollar less traded at 103.31 yen, down 1.9%, having hit a two and a half week low at 102.70.5 yen after the announcement of the BOJ decision. The euro was also 1.7% weaker at uh, 114.59. The BOJ announced a modest increase in the purchase of ETFs, but maintained its base money target at 80 trillion, which is 775 billion, as well as the pace of purchases for other assets, including Japanese government bonds. The BOJ also kept negative interest rates unchanged at minus 0.1. Many of the markets expected more cuts in rates as well as uh, possible more bond buying, and Japanese bond yields jumped by around 10 basis points in response. The BOJ clearly disappointed by merely expanding on its ETF purchases, leaving the annual pace of its monetary base increase and policy rate unchanged, said Hang Hong, uh, senior FX Vest. FX strategist with Credit Suisse. We can continue to expect a elevated volatility and possible short-term risk of yen strength back towards possibly 100.
Trading conditions in the dollar versus yen have been very illiquid going to the BOJ's announcement with the bid to aspirin widening to 0 0.40 yen at one point, although later narrowed back to around 0 0.02. The yen or so as trading conditions normalize. The market reaction to the BOJ's decision was exacerbated by a recent buildup in the expectations of the central bank to avail significant monetary easing that effectively would fund the government's plan for increased fiscal spending. There have been pretty strong hopes for combined pressures, and there is strong appreciation pressure on the yen now that such hopes have dissipated, says Satoshi Alagawa, uh, a senior global analyst for Sumitomo Mitsui uh, Banking Corporation in Singapore. Japanese government unveiled a surprisingly large 28 trillion yen package on Wednesday. So that's what they were saying. That was the outright that thought, hey, you know, that's going to pressure the BOJ to step in. And um, But sources told Reuters on Thursday that the government package contained direct fiscal spending of only 7 trillion, also likely to disappoint. So once again, spot on Reuters, always the best when it comes to that type of news, uh, just the best. I think actually I was the fastest one uh, with the news and the headlines when this was released anyway. I don't think when I was posting the headlines, still no one had even said anything. I was looking on my Twitter feed and I follow all the all the key FX news services and those that post. Um, Ibrahim says, good morning, Polly. Uh, Luca Luca says, with this low U.S. and CAD GDP today, Dollar cat should be volatile today, but fishy. It can't break 132 with uh, with oil this low, though. Yeah, that's a great point. I've been saying that all along. Do you have a dollar cat view for today? I am I am long from one uh, from 131.40. Yeah, we'll certainly take a look at it. Uh, Euro is also kind of pushing hard. It's just barely squeaking hard. It's almost like a, one of the guys in the chat room said, like nobody wants to take the other side. And essentially, I can think that's it. I mean, technically, we're still higher, so we close out the week good. I just think that it's kind of just like that. No one's standing in the way. And then I think that there's still a good chance that next week we can start to back down. Don't forget, next Friday is the NFP. And on the backdrop of this very, very good U.S. economic news, pretty much across the board, um, the risk is we see another good number. Not nothing compared to last month's, but still a very good number, which would ultimately continue to go on and, you know, if they see an even better number, would really weigh on the Fed. So um, we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, I'd actually reduce my size. Uh, before the decision, well, to me, I thought it was right before the decision, but that was at 10.30 Eastern, which I thought, and um, I said, you know, let me just reduce a little bit, just in case, because it looked like the market just really wanted to move higher at that point, but, uh, you know, nothing was happening, and like I said, it, it was well over an hour later before we even saw the news. Um, and I can't believe oil with the $40 handle, which Luca Luke was making that good point about, you know, Dollar CAD just can't seem to get you know anything out of this. Um, I don't think it's really a dollar store so much. It's, it's been that way already for a while, and I think that is uh, very concerning. I mean, the thing is, we just keep moving into better support, better support, but it doesn't make any difference. You know I mean, at best, when we move into better support, all it does is you know slow the market down. That appears all uh, you know or for a bit before it just goes and reasserts itself. So we're just yeah, you know, the crazy thing is we're just blowing through these support levels like nobody's business. Like I said, at best, you slow it down. And, you know, I told people, I was just talking with some people, I go, um, actually I was talking with a very big uh, uh, trader, and um, this person was saying, you know, they are talking about, you know, the, the – uh, the crack spread, and uh, so I mean, I mainly just look at just the market itself. But they're talking about, you know, we're having all that supply. I told, I was telling them, I said, you know, this is just reminiscent of what it was in May, but going the opposite direction. And I go, I remember it was in May. Uh, you know, the market just keep going higher and higher, um, and you know, I see pull, I see the market pull back in the morning, but by the end of the uh, session. 
we're making new highs. Now, the new highs would only be like, sometimes they'd only be like up 30 cents or up 28 cents or something like that, but it'd still be higher for the day. And I'm saying those directional systems, until they're, until they're proven wrong, they're just staying with it. So we'd see the the action pull back in the in the morning in the NYMEX, but you'd see it going and reassert itself by the close. So uh, until they're proven wrong, they're just going to stay that way. Another thing is that the market was ignoring for the longest time was uh, there was that story, a well-known story about five billion, uh, uh, I think it's five billion of um, of supply just sitting out there on the ocean. And they're talking about that, and you know, at the time we just kept going higher and higher. But you know, I was telling people, I go, yeah, I can't help but think that that's what's weighing. It just continues to weigh on this market too. And I did see a Reuters story that alluded, not to that story I was mentioning, but alluded to you know the constant supply overhang on the market. And um, okay. Big monthly loss. It's just crazy, man. I just, I like I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually short the, uh, your dollar, but I'm I've actually reduced my size. And I was telling some of the people in the chat room, it's actually been a saving grace, to be honest with you, because I was, I wanted to go in and buy the the, the crude oil yesterday. I did, and. Um, you know, look at it, it just continues to fall, and I probably would have jumped in and out around, but I still, there's no doubt in my mind, at the end of the day, I have to think that I would have taken some losses on that, even if I had jumped around. Look look where it's at, it continues to fall. So my position in the euro dollar is not very big at all, and uh, even then I reduced it just to be on the safe side. I thought if we get a wild jump, if they announce, I didn't think they would announce a whole big thing, but I thought they'd announce something a little bit higher, maybe around the 10 trillion yen. Maybe even 11 or 12. I thought, the way this is acting, it looks like it wants to jump up. And I was telling some people, I go, you know, this euro dollar, it might rally up to 11.51, the bottom of the zone. I go, this way, if I want to, I could just sell it right there. Because I think that, like I said, the risk is next week with the NFP that we can see a very good number. And uh, not great, uh, nothing compared to last month, but still a good number. They're saying, hey, we're still clipping along. And uh, so... But the good thing about that, like I said, in a weird way, like I said, saving grace is, uh, even though you shouldn't treat it like that, and generally I don't, you know, the idea that the, you know, the, we had come in at very, very good levels with the euro dollar. It wasn't, like I said, I, I didn't start to short it until it was uh, well over 80 pips off its lows on, on uh, that earlier, later on that, that afternoon after the FOMC. And, uh, but still, like I said, I thought to myself, you know, that just didn't, you know, was not holding out the right way I wanted it. And it just caused me not to feel, I guess also the constant, you know, lower in price of the crude oil, but I said, nah, I'm just not going to. And I told you, like I said, there was, was really a saving grace, you know, to be honest with you, because I, if I had gone along the euro, I mean, the crude oil, even though I may have tried to dance in and out, it, it still would not, I mean, I have to feel that I would have ended up losing money because it just there were good levels at forty one sixty two, very good level at forty one forty forty five, and look, we just continue to drip lower. But uh, we'll go and take a look to see what's uh, coming into today. GDP flash came in at point three. Unemployment rate came in right in line. Advanced GDP. Canadian GDP and producer prices, employment cost index. Uh, final U of M isn't going to be much of anything, but uh, cost index will give a little bit of it here. But the GDP, you know, 
they're looking for 2.6. I mean, this economy's been stronger than what people expect. A lot of people have given it credit for. Uh, a whole heck of a lot stronger than they had. So, uh, I'll tell you what, that, that, that NFP, like I said, uh, that could, you know, if we get a good one, it's just going to going to go and continue to wait, but uh, we'll see what happens. But we've got GDP and Canadian GDP as well as producer prices. Luke Lucas says, may see an outsized euro pound leg up in August. BOE aside, reports of major corporate repatriation flows from the UK headquarters to European branches of large multinationals. You know, that's a very good point, Luca. Uh, real money euro pound flows may also prop up the euro dollar. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. I think about that. That is a very, very, very good point. Excellent point. From a, now I'm going to say a macro perspective, but yeah, it could hold it up here. Excellent point on that. It really could. I don't think it's as much right now. I don't think. I don't think people. I don't think businesses are going to work like that. There's a big re repatriation all at one time. I think they're going to start to balance things out. But it can, as you're noting, I think it can put an underpin pinning to the market. But once again, I mean, I think. So what that would mean is all things being equal, if we don't go overboard in the euro, we could. The risk would be a pullback into NFP. Um, but then we could bounce it back up, like it could, you know, retain its buoyancy. But we'll see what happens. Drink some coffee. And I've only been up for just a little bit. I mean, I, like I said, I was tired. I used to go in bed about, um, about 10.30 Eastern. And I still get up early, but not that early. Sometimes, literally, I've been waking up kind of early just by chance. So for me to go to bed, you know, about three hours later, that's pretty tough, let me tell you. So we're moving to the charts. I posted this chart on Twitter, so I at least would have something to gauge with. Um, so here's the dollar yen. You can see we came into the zone here, 223 to 285. You can see that here. So we dipped into that zone, found support, and popped back here. I still think, I mean, the way I look at it is we're just going to have to head lower. That's it. Because, you know, most expect us to go ahead lower at this point. And my point is, is that there's not really any any reason for the market to go in and rally. I mean, people are going to use any kind of rally to sell into. So it's just a matter of how far. Now, we've had a pretty good wide swing, though. That's the only thing. We had a very good wide swing. To be honest with you, I thought we might have even seen even more volatility. But I think overall, this market will suddenly work lower. So I think the places obviously is going to be this 223, which would take out you know the, the, the low. So maybe we can punch it on down here right around 2. 210 is a 61% of the actual low here of 98 that brings it low. 98.79 to the high that we recently had of 750. This was a phenomenal area to get back short again here. I, to be honest with you, so much stuff is happening over the dollar yen. I can't. I think this was. I don't even know if this is when they, were, they thought they were going to mention. I, I, it's been so up and down like crazy. It just, but you know, there was that key level, that 650. I know there was a couple of people who didn't get a chance to short. Ended up shortening right there. Um, 
Well, obviously, like I said, the volatility we've seen, you know, people aren't going to keep on hanging on, but uh, great, great volatility we see. I just think that obviously just augurs for lower prices, and the next real test is going to be just one or two. Now we've gone pretty quiet in here. So we're going to take a look here in the Euro. And we'll hold them up in here. I think that at this point now, the 10, 1043, the 1043, is actually the bias pivot at this point because if you look here on the way down you see how they bounced off of it retested not huge came off of this again as we went through 1043 you know we accelerated lower not a whole lot but we accelerated continued the, the drag on this market and we had a test of 1043 here got thrown thrown back not a whole lot, but we still got thrown back. And then we got above 10.43 and closed right on it. We tried rallying back up here, couldn't take it out. Closed right on it. I mean, closed right, you know, we, well, we opened, but we started sliding back. And opened the door to push them higher. But we've, we stayed in a relatively tight range. And we made another four-way four -way back up to 10.43, and we fell back. Got dunked back pretty good. A feeble rally up here, and then obviously where we came in post MP. But so I think that, that there's you know the market I believe going into next week will look to test this lower area. And this previous high is right here at 1030. And this is where I think the dimension that they can go to. Now, I believe, like I said, uh, and here's this upper area, this 1151 that I mentioned earlier. You know, on a good, you know, uh, QE, I thought that they'd be able to go up here. Because then, like I said, then it's risk on. But um, so we're trying to work a little bit higher. But I, I just think it's, it, the way the market's acting, it's not like as if we're trying to take off. It looks like they're just you know gently letting it edge higher uh, with not too much standing in the way of it. Uh, we'll have to see what they do. But this this is the key area here is this eleven fifty one. If they're trying to get you, you can see here very key area here. But Unless, like I said, people are trying to play that story like Lucas says about the uh, the euro having a benefit because of the euro pound. Once again, I just I just don't know about that. I'm saying is it, it you know, like I said, I've seen the euro. It's a good point, though. I've seen the euro in the past over the years play that game. But, you know, the only thing that, that they, to me that the euro has going for is... Um, Is a you know here's the deal. Another interesting note is back in June we had the highest dollar bets. I mean, just recently we had, I'm saying just recently uh, last Friday was the largest dollar bets since the beginning of June. Now we didn't break lower, and I thought that on the NFP we got, I mean the uh, FOMC we should. Taking out the lows here, but 
I don't think those people turn around and capitulate or anything like that. So we're letting some of those people, some of the people jump it out, which, like I said, if this thing wanted to take off, it could have, which I believe. My whole thinking here was when we got up here, which was at 38%, and obviously this was key, you look back in retrospect, I would have thought that the market would have pulled back into the teens and then start to reassert itself. So no one had really got a chance to buy into this. That's what I'm saying is, is it's almost like it's being held up here. I don't want, like I said, the way I would look, I'm looking at it, almost like it's being held up on fumes because people might have said, you know what, this thing is bullish now, but I'm not going to buy it here. I'll buy it here, and I'll buy it here, but I'm not going to chase it. Well, those people are in the market, so even though you come back up, my guess is we're going to have to come back down to find willing buyers. Now, had the BOJ have given some very good QE or decent QE, even moderately decent, and we jumped up to 11.51, maybe 11.70, yeah, the people would say, wait a minute, we've taken a leg here. So now my area to buy it now is back towards 11.20 or something, you see? But we, they didn't. So that's what I'm saying. It's almost like it's kind of trying to do a little bit of an upside trip, but there really isn't a whole lot there. But it's already time for break. Like I said, it's been a very long night. I've only had a few hours of sleep, so um, we are definitely going to go and take our break. I'm definitely grabbing the full 10 minutes. I'm, I'm tired as can be. So I'll put this back to the news. And I'll be taking my full 10-minute break because it's been a long night. Me going to bed almost three hours later than usual and then still having to get up early. So I'll catch you on the bed. Okay, everybody, uh, welcome back to the uh, European Crossover webinar. And... Um, Lynette was also saying today's also end of month flows. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a little bit of an upside drift in Euro. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, I, I think if if we had got the announcement, um, we would have jumped up to 11.51. So like I said, uh, I think people aren't fighting because of the end of the month drift, but uh, like I said, the risk is that we get a pretty good decent NFP next month which is only a week away. So let's take a look also to see how uh, gold reacted. I've been saying this, uh, I may have mentioned yesterday, but I was in the chat room. Um, I said that at the very beginning of the week is that uh, Gold needed a two-hour close above 48.70 to turn it bullish on mode, okay? Because even though we were pushing up here, it wasn't going to go to bullish until we can get above this 48.70. Uh, obviously, if we would have got the, if the BOJ would have done something, that would have pushed us up here. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm surprised uh, we didn't fall even further. So gold held up relatively well overall. But we do have a long-legged doji. And I've told you all that before. With long-legged doji, even though we have pulled back, but obviously good reasons why, uh, it's generally going to mean that the bulls don't have control. So we're closing the middle. The bears don't have control. That's where we're closing in the middle. So generally, the market has lost its momentum. So, and this is a long legged doji. Uh, unlike you, sometimes we look at it, it looks more like a medium legged doji. So, what has been the prevailing trend? Well, the prevailing trend has been up. Thus, when you get a long way to go to, generally you're going to go and run counter to that to kind of balance things out. So we did go on and drip here from 44 down to 
38, and we'll try to push back up here at 141. This 42.50 is sitting up right here, so this is probably going to have a little bit of trouble here. But like I said, all things being equal, we didn't get the, um, we didn't get the, uh, you know, the, the QE that the market wanted. So once again, you see this upside drift might be a little bit of month in squaring, as Lynette was saying. Uh, but I'm saying at the end of the day, did we get it? No. So that's why, I mean, this is probably going to have to go and work lower back down at 1, uh, 1330. And why the dolly in is going to go and continue a downside bent, even though we have seen a pretty good sell-off. But I'm just saying, all things being equal, who's going to say, man, I got to go long dolly in. Uh, we didn't get the QE. And they were saying they're going to revise, they're going to review everything, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I posted that story well before, right before uh, the FMC thing. I guess it should have been a good hint there, although I wasn't sure I was going to play it. Uh, they were shuffling the cabinet. You know, they were doing everything and anything to put lipstick on that pig because it looked. You know, talking about, there was a guy right before the announcement, and he goes, "Man, it's been quiet." And he goes, "I'm thinking of bazooka." And I'm like, "I'm thinking the opposite." And I go, "Because if you got a bazooka, you're just going to go and pull it out. Why are you going to wait?" I go, "I think Corona's putting lipstick on that pig." And I'll be doggone. No sooner I tweeted that out, about uh, three minutes later, boom, here it comes out. And the big disappointment. If it was good news, they would just, boom, they would put it out immediately. But they took their doggone sweet time. The longest I've ever seen it for a statement. Generally, the, I've seen the statements come in, you know, about maybe as early as about 10, 20 or 10, 15. Generally, it's been the early Eastern time. But generally it comes in right around 10, 30 Eastern. Sometimes a little bit later, I've seen it at, you know, like uh, maybe about 10 minutes after 11 Eastern time. And the the second longest I've seen it was around 11.20 Eastern time. The longest that I can remember was around 11.40 Eastern. So when we got past that, I go, man, this is the longest that I can remember. Not saying there ever was not one longer. That's the longest I can remember ever. And sure enough, because it's bad news. They took as long as they could to drag that and put as much lipstick on that pig. But at the end of the day, like I tell you, you can put all the lipstick you want on a pig, but at the end of the day, it's still a pig. So they finally had to bring out Rosie the pig, and the market saw it, and everybody started throwing tomatoes at the stage. So we're quiet right now, but it just augurs right now for a push down here. should be able to take out one or two. Yeah, people aren't willing to get in the way because, you know, like we're seeing those month end flows. And right now, the markets are relatively quiet. Like I said, we've got a little bit of an upside bend here in the euro, but uh, like I said, it just, it just seems like it's just a drift. No one's really wanting to step in and take the other side to push anything. I, mean, I think even people that went on the other side are saying, well, they've got those upside, you know, month end flows. No need me stepping in and fighting it right now. I can just wait. I can come in, you know, on Sunday session, beginning of the week, you know, so I think it has more to do with that. Just a And we'll take a look here on the Aussie dollar, see how that fared.
And you can see here, here's the thing, and that's not like, like I was mentioning about the go up a long legged doji, but kind of like here, almost like a medium legged doji on a very, very short time frame. But once again, like I was telling you, you see that? Bulls don't have control, bears don't have control. What's the, what's the uh, what was the prevailing direction? Up. So what you do is you counter the move. You see? Uh, I saw a story yesterday that um, the consumer credit for Australia, I'm saying their ability, I mean, avail I, should say, I guess I should say available consumer credit has really dried up. So um, that is going to suggest that the RBA in the future would probably look for some rate cut and we suggest also that we'll have to move lower. Now, I know there was some talk in the middle of the week that um, we could even go sub, sub 72. We'll have to see how that all plays out. But I have to think that in light of different things is that um, really opens the door for this pair to go and move lower. And I guess if we were to take a look, Sure seems likely they'll take up to the 74. So the next key target is right here, which is a whole lot lower, 7361, which that's still about 150 pips away. This makes a lot of sense where they would go to. We'll see what looks what we're looking at. Well, the 7381 would be the 78 percent here. To me, it looks like we make a run for here, 7361. See all the touches. Doesn't mean we can't overshoot it, but this would be looking for 7361. Because if you look at it, we've had this run up here. And they dropped back. We had you know, a little mix roll here. To me, it just suggests we'll have to take another move lower. And that's probably, if you look at it from a little bit bigger picture, ultimately, yeah, they'll probably make a run to the 73.22. Some people are looking for 72 cents. But, yeah, I think that that would, that would generally go on and get us, should go on and have a, a move down to 73.60. But I don't think that'll stop it. I think we can bounce from there, and then it'll take us down to here, probably down to 72.95. But I think the first target right now is going to be the 7361. Right here. So let's go on and take a look at um, the dollar cad. Now, we've done pretty good as far as, you know, 
entries and exits on this. You remember last Friday, a week ago, I was the one who said to buy this thing when it was dipping back down here. Remember that? Last Friday. That's it. That's me on air saying, buy the Donald Cat. And look what happened. And right before the release of the FOMC, that was me right here saying, you got to sell this dog. It doesn't look like it's, you know, the pullback, but look at that pullback. And we made it faded right here at the 32.56, and we came right down to 38%. So to me, it looks like we're just going to have to work a little bit lower. I mean... With crude oil falling apart, I can't believe we're not at, we're not at new highs. It's just unbelievable to me. And we'll take a look at the crude right now. I mean, I'm, I'm even shocked. I wouldn't say shock, but I am very, very surprised. We we have a forty dollar handle. I mean, my my secondary target on crude was forty two fifty. Here, and forty one ninety one was at thirty eight percent of the low at twenty six oh five to the high of fifty one sixty nine. It hasn't even slowed this market down, and we just and I would have thought that the at the bottom of this zone here, 41.79, 43.56 would have, you know, and it did, but all it did was pause it. And I'm just, can't believe it. Now, there are some funds I've seen where they think we're going to 39. Well, you know what? We're not that far away. We're only 76 cents away from a $39 handle. It's just... Unbelievable. I thought that the highest we we're going to get to was fifty twenty, fifty dollars and twenty cents. Because my whole thing was the global economy didn't support it. And people were telling me, oh, we're going to fifty six, we're going to fifty eight. I mean heard some people talking about sixty two. I kept saying the global economy. I go the U.S. economy can 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 you know uh, hold that thing up, but not the rest of the other rest of the economy. But I'm even surprised, you know, the extent of the fall. I thought yesterday we would have held them. We would have held them here. And that's what I'm saying. To me, it's a bit of a a mixed blessing uh, that I got short Euro late in the day on FOMC because uh, it wasn't, it's not even a big position. But, it, you know, the thinking that they didn't even pull back just put me in a situation like, you know what, that didn't make any sense. Like maybe it didn't read it right, but I don't think so. But it... It just put me in a situation where I was like, you know what? I don't even feel like I'm just going to sit and watch the market. I really don't feel like, you know, putting on a trade in here. I would have danced in and out, but at the end of the day, I would have lost some money trying to buy crew. So, I mean, the idea that crude is absolutely collapsing, even though it's just little by little, which is reminiscent of what crude did on the way up towards fifty dollars. And the idea that dollar CAD can't make new highs is exceptionally troubling. I don't want to buy this thing. 
I mean, we talked about it yesterday. I was talking to some people. When we're moving up here, I go, we're just moving into that zone, 3171, 3191. Actually, it stopped it here and pulled it back. To me, it just seems like he's going to struggle in here and have to go and pull back and probably come down here to 3060, go down there, I think. Well, Blake should be coming on in about another minute or so. I know I'm tired after that long, long night and only just a few hours of sleep. <laughs> 